Okay, football fans, welcome to the 2011 NFL Draft. Let's get back to some football. Yeah, there you go. The 2011 NFL Draft is officially open. The Carolina Panthers are on the clock. With the first pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Cam Newton, quarterback, Auburn. Big time player, obviously, Heisman Trophy. Won a national championship at Blinn Junior College. Then he won a national championship at Auburn University. I can tell you from watching every single one of his game tapes, there's an awful lot to like, but Carolina fans, you need to be patient also. And the anticipation in an NFL passing tree will be brand new to him. However, I think Carolina will take care of him. I think they'll tailor their offense to what he does best. This is how the draft is supposed to work. The most electrifying player goes to the worst team and gives that team hope, gives those fans hope. John Fox, John Elway, and Brian Sanders perhaps waiting for the phone to ring, perhaps pulling the trigger on a prearranged deal since Cam Newton was expected to go. Is it Marcel Darius, the top player on your draft board, Mike Mayock? Marcel Darius, the defensive tackle out of Alabama. Could it be Von Miller, the linebacker out of Texas A&M? He is on the telephone, it appears, maybe getting drafted, but we didn't see any of the Denver Broncos on the phone. Look, they were number 32 in the league in points allowed. This was a bad defensive football team. They could get help at all three levels on the defensive side. Originally, I thought it was Marcel Darius up until this last week because the more I thought about how you get better quickly in Denver, it's to pass up Darius knowing the strength of this draft is defensive tackle. Get yourself the best edge rusher in this draft and build your defense around him. With the second pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Von Miller, linebacker, Texas A&M. So it is Von You're Miller. talking about the guy with the, first, the best first step in college football. Is going to shake hands with the man who runs the league and hugs the man who he's suing. I love it. This is what's happening right now in the National Football League world. But Von Miller and the commissioner have bonded this week as they have met on a couple of occasions. And an emotional moment for Von Miller and the commissioner, no doubt. Yeah, they had to be looking at either Von Miller or Marcel Darius. Remember, they drafted Aaron Maben a couple years ago. That didn't work out. Marcel Darius with the number 32 run team in the, in the NFL. With the third pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Marcel Darius, defensive tackle, Alabama. With rare <laughs> movement skills. I love the pick. And when you put the tape on, I'm going to show Michael Irvin a play on this tape. I'm going to call it the money tape, Michael, and you're going to love it. His college coach is the guy who puts him out on the stage. And, and that's the thing, Nick Saban, they played it 3-4, played it 3-4. When you think about this kid, how much strength he played with. When I look at him playing with the Buffalo Bills, they have an inside presence now. The guy you need. Here he is at the five technique, the defensive end. Watch the movement skills, the dip. Mm. Now watch him bend and turn the corner. Flattens out, flushes the quarterback. Three technique, slant hard inside. They're going to bring a blitz off the edge. Watch the vision, the split, find the quarterback, split the center guard. Bang. Now a little Reggie White club rip right here. Watch this move from the three tech. Whoa! Get off me. The rip underneath beats the double team. Now here comes Michael Irvin, my money play right here. This All is right Cam there. Newton. Watch right here. He breaks down like a basketball player, mirrors the quarterback, <laughs> and the 320 pounder. The Cincinnati Bengals during that interview put their pick in, and one must wonder. There's Blaine Gabbert sitting at the board at number four. Is this going to be the time that the Cincinnati Bengals move on from 
Carson Palmer or do they take this young man, A.J. Green? We shall see what's going to happen. Okay, with the fourth pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select A.J. Green, wide receiver, Georgia. Chad Ochocinco has one year left on his contract. Is this merely a replacement for Chad? Or can they live together for a future term? Because the bottom line to me is if you lose Chad, all you did was replace one guy with another, and you haven't helped your ball club. And two different receivers, Coach. Very, two very different receivers. You know, Chad. Yeah, but I'm saying you got to sign them and keep them. Absolutely. I, absolutely. But, but, but maybe they are even saying, you know, Chad gives us one thing. Right. We didn't get very far with the one thing Chad gives us. Right. Let's go at someone that gives us something different. Scanning the green room for prospects on the telephone. That's Patrick Peterson of LSU. Blaine Gabbert not on the telephone. So it appears that Arizona will not go with the quarterback from Missouri here, even though that seems to be their most glaring need. Patrick Peterson is uh, obviously one of the top players available in this year's draft. What all of this means, if Peterson goes, Gabbert does not. That means Gabbert and Julio Jones would be out there for the sixth pick in the draft, which we're hearing Mike Mayock a lot about. Could be a potential trade spot for somebody from down in the draft to come up and get Julio Jones. We've been hearing Atlanta might be one of those teams. If Peterson goes here, and the Browns might have wanted him, maybe we see some activity coming up in the next 20 minutes or so. This is the first pivot point to the draft. I really thought the first four would go as they did. Arizona, up until this week, I thought would take a quarterback. I took Patrick Peterson. There's an awful lot of trade talk, both at five, six, and seven. So stay awake, folks. With the fifth pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Patrick Peterson. Defensive back, LSU. Now, I'm going to tell you what that tells me about Arizona. Ken Wisenhut, Rod Graves, Steve Kime, they think they can compete in the NFC West. And it tells me by not getting a quarterback, they think they can get a veteran. We've got a pick at 38 overall right. that we could do some business with maybe to move up with, or they could wait and see somebody that's down there at 38th overall. But as Peterson comes out onto the field, uh, onto the field, onto the uh, stage, and is the latest prospect to give a bear hug for Roger Goodell. And as expected, the trade has just been announced. To come up here to get Julio Jones, that young man from Alabama, right there, to move from 27 to 6 wow. is brutal. So what will happen is they'll flip first round picks. Atlanta will give their second round pick and probably a third or a fourth in this year's draft and Rich a one and a four in next year's draft. Wow. So to move from 27 to six and that that's approximate those but it's real close. What kind of money do you play at 27? You don't pay a whole lot at 27 at six. You pay a lot of money. And it's the second and fourth this year. And as you said, Mike Mayock, next year's first and fourth rounder. All of them going to the Cleveland Browns, who we have said have quite a few holes to fill. And wow, do they now have the tools with which to fill some holes. The Cleveland Browns have traded the sixth pick to the Atlanta Falcons. With the sixth pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select... Julio Jones, wide receiver, Alabama. So Julio Jones coming to the stage. This breaks the hearts of some Rams fans that hope that he possibly could drop to them down all the way to 14. Watch him stick his foot in the ground at 6'3 and a half, Michael Irvin, about 218 pounds. Break back to the quarterback, creating separation from the defensive back. Watch him use his big body in the end zone against Chris Culliver. First he widens him, then he gets the big body like a weak side rebounder, makes the high point. I hate the hop right here. What's a D back going to do when you hop? Yeah, he's going to he jack get you. Up under that chip. He's going to oh. jack you right he's up, right isn't up, he? You better believe. But then he creates separation with that 4-3-9 speed. And guys, watch the toughness. You play for Nick Saban, you're going to block. Crack back. Bang. Put him on his back, Julio. Mm. You look like you're all nervous over there. I love this guy. I love the physicality of a receiver like him. What a great compliment to Michael Jacobs, Roddy Absolutely. White, Tony Gonzalez, Matt Ryan is ecstatic right now. 
because you are six for six so far. Yeah, uh, you, that's about the end, big boy. Yeah. <laughs> He's got sources, Rich. Well, the bottom line is the 49ers pick is in. With the seventh pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Alden Smith, defensive end, Missouri. So who would have thought that the first Missouri player taken in this draft would be Alden Smith and not Blaine Gabbard? When you're the outside linebacker, your number one duty is to go forward and beat that tackle. And this kid is, has freakish ability, and he understands how to pass rush. Tennessee Titans took only four minutes of their time. I'm getting my cardio in during the first round. I didn't think that <laughs> I would tonight. But these, things are really moving very fast. What, what do you think the Titans are doing right here? Well, I mean, first and foremost, there's a quarterback sitting right there that they probably didn't expect to be sitting there. So Blaine Gabbard sitting there not looking real happy. And I think the defensive tackle fairly is the other logical pick right here. But if he doesn't go here at number eight, I would think that Washington and Minnesota are both thinking about coming up to Dallas, or excuse me, Minnesota be thinking coming up ahead of Washington with Dallas. With the eighth pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Jake Locker, quarterback, Washington. Now we have our first shocker of the draft. Jake Locker is the second quarterback taken. Not Blaine Gabbard. Jake Locker goes eighth overall to the Titans. Mike Mayock, you have the stage. I'm going to tell you right now, first round tools, accuracy in the pocket, and awareness are his issues. Now, when you watch Locker, you get the good with the bad. Here's the zone read. He reads correctly, pulls it. Look at the speed. And by the way, the toughness. Finish the run, Jake. Great job. He's 230 pounds. He's got ability when he rolls out to his left. Mooch, watch the accuracy here on the left. Turn the hips, flip it, bang. I love him on the move. He reminds now me of watch Aaron here. Rodgers. Right, watch here in the pocket. I don't get this throw. Clear vision, unimpeded pocket. No problem. Why do you throw it in double coverage? You don't. Again, crossing route. Where's the football? Way too often do I see this watching the tape. Again, Nebraska against the hang corner. Why are you throwing the football? It, it would be good if Dallas can make those moves, but right now Dallas has everything they wanted. You know, you talk about the needy offensive linemen. Well, the, all the best guys are right there. They can still grab one of those guys. Or Prince. You know, I talked yep. about uh, seeing Prince walk around with Coach uh, Campo over there in the green. This is uh, his eyes as he looked at him. But Dallas has everything right there. That ninth spot really turns out to be a good spot for Dallas because they can trade a move or get a player that can impact them this season. With the ninth pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Tyren Smith, offensive tackle, USC. Can he be your left tackle with that wingspan? Do you experiment with that for maybe a year? Marshall, I think what you do is you sign Doug Frey for a year or whatever the contract is, but you get him under contract knowing that this kid's played right tackle his whole life. Give him a year to get adjusted and acclimated and then kick him over to the left side for the rest of his career. And uh, as the newest member of the Dallas Cowboys takes the stage, we have been uh, wondering for the last three and a half months what the Washington Redskins will do when they're at the 10th pick. That will they go and get a quarterback? But we were mentioning Jake Locker, who's already off the board. Maybe Mallett, who's still on the board. Gabbert was really never even mentioned in the discussion because the Redskins didn't have any other draft picks of note, third or fourth round picks, to trade up to get him. Well, the skins are on the clock. And guess who's still available? Blaine Gabbert sitting right up there, followed by Quinn, Nick Fairley, The Prince, Cameron Jordan, J.J. Watt, Daquan Bowers, and Anthony Costanzo of Boston College. The Jacksonville Jaguars struck a trade during the commercial break. The Jaguars with David Garrard, who's on the hook for a lot of money there, or has been at least. Under he, Go he's, ahead. He, he, understand, why would they make this move? Understand that Jacksonville, all their picks are now being made by Gene Smith and Terry McDonough. Jack Del Rio probably doesn't want a rookie quarterback this year. <laughs> you don't however, think? However, <laughs> however, for the long-term interests of this ball club, they've got a pretty good quarterback that they believe 
is a position, if they ever want to win a Super Bowl, has got to be better. And so the Jacksonville Jaguars will take Blaine Gabbert. And Rich, it's a position they've been trying to upgrade. With the 10th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Blaine Gabbert, quarterback, Missouri. So we now have three quarterbacks going in the first 10 picks of this year's NFL Draft. And this kid from Mizzou is now a Jacksonville Jaguar. Now he's a spread quarterback, a little sloppy footwork, but I like the anticipation, finding a window and throwing it to the anticipated area for his receiver in between three different defensive players. Again, watch it manipulate coverage. Holds the safety, brings the backers up. He's gonna throw a little jerk route in behind. Nice job there by the quarterback. You know, turn the Rams around from 1 and 15, Marshall, to a, nearly a playoff team. They both ran the spread offense. Bradford was a little bit more under center. They are both 6 feet 4 plus. They are both 235 pounds. They have both started 31 games in college. They both are very smart. Heck, Blaine Gabbert had a 42, Rich, on the Wonderlick. That's a little bit higher than you. So I like it. He yeah. makes all the throws. He will be fine under the center. I'm surprised, to be honest with you, that he lasted this long to the number 10 pick. I like him a lot, and it's a good situation, like Marshall said. Let him compete with David Garrard, maybe learn from a veteran for a little bit before he takes that thing over. And I'm sure this is just fine, and Peachy Keen for the Houston Texans, who are on the clock right now, a team that got torched in the back end of their defense, has Prince Mukamar sitting out there for them to take. If you could stick this guy on the other end from uh, from Mario. the first overall pick, Mario Williams. For a couple, you're shaking your head, Marshall. That, that's three. That would be three defense alignment in what five years, right. six years. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, they're, they're, toy going, for Wade they're going to the, to the well again on D lineman. Hmm. I really thought Amu Kamara would be the pick here. Yep. They were torched last year in their secondary. For me, Rick Smith, the general manager, the head coach, Kubiak. Their jobs depend on improving their defense. We all know they're going to score points. This team's got to get better in defense. And by the way, I love J.J. Watt. But me too. And, and he's a stout five technique. He can push the, push the pocket. We're going back to that whole thing. Pressure up front makes you better on the back end also. But wow. With the 11th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select... J.J. Watt, defensive end, Wisconsin. So a Badger is going down to Texas. And if you put the tape on in the Rose Bowl against TCU, you can see him play inside, outside, stand up, and he can disrupt an offense. And he has some very simple marching orders now on the Houston Texans. Go hunt 18 <laughs> twice a year. I think there's three logical guys. Costanzo at left tackle. Bryant McKinney makes a lot of money. The first round pick in 2002, not playing to Pro Bowl level. Corner, don't forget Abu Kamara, still on the clock. Winfield coming off an injury. Same thing with Griffin. You got to upgrade at the corner position. And finally, defensive tackle. Pat Williams probably out the door. Corey Lee Jitt from Illinois. They're the three guys I think they're looking at right now. How about Nick Fairley still on the draft board? I mean, a lot of Nick, people were definitely questioning his work ethic. And They're great fans in Minnesota. With the 12th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Christian Ponder, quarterback, Florida State. becomes the fourth quarterback taken in the first 12 picks. Leslie Frazier said if that guy was out there, that would be someone you could build around, like Jay Cutler, like Aaron Rodgers, like Matthew Stafford, and the rest of that division. He said he wanted that guy. He believes it's Christian Ponder, Mike. Christian Ponder had a huge draft process starting right here at the Senior Bowl. He had a very average senior season with a bad elbow. Now, what he did in the Senior Bowl, not only did he drive the football with accuracy, but he also was the MVP of the game. Now, what I believe he is, is a quarterback with a West Coast tool set. Timing and accuracy, good throw to Hankerson, the Miami player in the game. Throws it away from the inside leverage corner, puts it on him for a touchdown. Rick Spielman is now tied at the hip. 
with this young quarterback <laughs> because, man, he's betting an awful lot on a kid that most people thought was going to go somewhere between about 25 and 40. Well, I love this pick because Christian Conner is a smart guy. He's working on his second master's degree. How about Matt Hasselbeck from Boston College? I'm not talking about where they got drafted. I'm talking about skill set, how they play the game. Matt can make all the throws, short, intermediate, and long. Nothing sensational, but he gets the job done. He was in the Super Bowl not too long ago. Christian Ponder can make all the throws. He's a tough guy. He's overcome injuries. He's a good ball handler. He can, he can make you bite as a linebacker. With his play action fakes, he can move out of the pocket with your movements and keeps. And you know what? He can run their offense, their West Coast offense, very well. And if you heard of Jason Lock and Forrest say moments ago that the Redskins really coveted Ponder, well, there was an oh shoot moment in uh, in Virginia just moments ago because Ponder's now off the board. It you doesn't know. matter, Mooch, where you draft the guy if three years from now you're in the Super Bowl. It right. doesn't matter if you draft him at 12 or you draft him at 110. If you believe the guy is a franchise quarterback, as Rick Spielman did, I applaud the move, but he put himself at risk. Mooch. Bill Musgrave is a West Coast guy, and yeah, Christian absolutely. Ponder was the ideal West Coast quarterback it's in the draft fit with all of the, the, the what we ask in, of a quarterback in the West Coast offense, the play action, the movements, the keeps, throwing the ball from the run, thinking, making right decisions. He is perfect for that scheme. And this beast on the same With line. the 13th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Nick Fairley. Defensive tackle, Auburn. Oh, oh, who's going to run on Nick? Who's going to run against that? They've got to stop Adrian Peterson, I guess. Oh, who's going to run on wow, that? That big boy right there is a beast, man. That boy, he has a high motor. With the 14th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the St. Louis Rams select Robert Quinn, defensive end, North Carolina. Mike entering the combine, you had him as a possible number one overall pick. He goes 14th overall. The Rams get themselves a, a kid with some motor, huh? He's a gifted edge rusher. This kid's still 20 years old. I believe his best football is ahead of him. Moots talked about his high school wrestling. He was a three-time state heavyweight champion. And when you think about him and Chris Long on the other yep. side, Chris Long made huge strides, not just in the passing game, but in the run game as well. When you think about Steve Spagnola, I think about him with the Giants. You can never have too many defensive linemen. Remember the amount of pressure that they used to apply with so many different guys. I think let's preface this. If you're a team that already has a good quarterback, you are ecstatic. Why? Four quarterbacks are off the board in the first 14 picks, which means a good football player has got a better chance of falling to you. At the back end of this draft, I think we're going to see a possibility of either Dalton and then the Ryan Mallett thing to me is a total, total, I can't tell you. He, he's got so much gift, gifts to play the quarterback position at the NFL, but his off the field stuff. <laughs> With the 15th pick in the 2011 NFL draft, the Miami Dolphins select Mike Pouncey, center Florida. So that's Marquise Pouncey, his twin brother from the Pittsburgh Steelers, who's there to welcome his brother into the league. Those two guys were inseparable their whole lives. They were twin, you know, they are twin brothers. They were roommates at Florida. Last year was essentially the first year they, they were not together. And, and I'm sure he will get a wonderful New York Jet welcome into the National Football <laughs> League here. <laughs> Holding the Dolphins jersey up. With his 16th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select Ryan Kerrigan, linebacker, Purdue. There you go. When you talk about the work ethic and toughness. What I like about this guy, Mike, unanimous All-American. He's the co-captain, so you know what kind of guy he's going to be in the locker room. Defensive player of the year in the Big Ten. High motor with hustle. One of these kind of guys. Just got his hair cut. He's looking those, good. <laughs> comes from one of those football families. Where do you think the Patriots are thinking right now? Do you think the phone's ringing there, or, or it's too early? It's the 28th pick the phone would be ringing for, Mike. If it's a value pick, it's Prince of Mukamara. He slid a little bit. I don't think they'll go for Bowers, who's also sliding. The tailback is of an intrigue to me, Marshall, right here. And, and they might wait on Ingram to see if he's there at 28. But Mark Ingram, 
fits what they do. They wouldn't have to use a converted wide receiver. Trading places. You know, so I think running back Marshall with New England might make some sense. And if you think about Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots and the type of guys that they draft, they love SEC players. Cameron Jordan is a player that fits their scheme. Cameron Jordan can play inside or outside. The Patriots are almost 50-50 with a three-man front and a four-man front. People don't realize that. Cameron Jordan would fit either way with them. Prince of Mukamara, Mark Ingram, and Costanzo. Now, the last time I said these are the three picks, that's who they have to take. The Minnesota Vikings took a quarterback I had ranked number 47, so maybe I ought to shut my mouth. Well, the pick is here. With the 17th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Nate Solder, offensive tackle, Colorado. Mike Mayock, your thoughts? Now, Nate Solder to me is one of the most gifted offensive linemen I've seen in the last couple of years from a foot athlete perspective. However, I think he's underpowered. He's got a tremendously high ceiling, technical issues. I love the football player, Corey Legit. I question just a little bit the scheme fit. San Diego's a base 34 team. I thought Legit was the prototype three technique. Doesn't mean he can't play the five technique the defensive end in a three-man front, but that's what San Diego is going to ask him to play. With the 18th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the San Diego Chargers select Corey Legit, defensive end, Illinois. Yeah, fired up in the powder blue. Fighting a line eye as we begin to see some Big Ten players go off the board. Everybody keep comparing Mark Ingram to who? Emmitt Smith. Smith. Emmitt Smith terrorized the New York Giants. Torched him. If you can get this kid behind that offensive line. Yep. I, yep. I mean, we but, know how much this offensive line loves to run the football. Yep. The left tackle position would be coveted. Now, because they can plug him in and move David Deal inside. It's a two for one if you draft the left tackle. But I think Solder was probably the one they liked. So if it's not Costanzo, and it could be, Alden Smith is off the board, another guy I believe they like. So for me, I'm with Marshall. I like the tailback Ooh. pick here. It's a no-brainer. You're getting a great football player, cold weather player, tough kid. Moach, you love it. I do. Uh, you know what? I'm looking at the mock drafts around here, and guess Who's who mock had? Draft is it? Guess who had? Whose mock draft Mark, is it? Mayock's mock draft. Mark Ingram. That's who you had, huh? Yeah. yeah. You got sources in every building. I had an I don't, offensive nobody lineman. Nobody announced that one. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that Prince of Mukamara is on the phone, and. Uh, he will be joining a secondary that was retooled in the last couple of years. Uh, Antro Roll, they broke the bank on to go get. Uh, they got a very talented safety there as well, Kenny Phillips. And uh, this would certainly bolster things in the NFC East for him at this position. I love the pick for two reasons. And as much as I would say I like Ingram also, I love it for two reasons. He's the number nine player on my board. Now, I picked Ingram for my mock, so I'm, I'm losing points here. But he's my number nine player. You can't lose when you trust your board. And secondly, you can never have enough corners on a football team. And here's the commissioner to make it official for the big blue faithful who are fired up for the announcement. With the 19th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Prince Amukamara, defensive back, Nebraska. There we go. They like it. They like this. The Colts probably had their eye on Nate Solder, Solder. okay? The Bucks probably had their eye on Prince Amukamara. Uh, boy, they're going to have to readjust and take a look at their boards and see Does who's available. Does Bowers go? That's what I want to know. Does he Bowers go here? Yeah, well, we're here in the, at the 20th spot. Ingram is still chilling uh, in the green room. Daquan Bowers, we all know a lot of people are, are talking about this being a pick here uh, because, well, everyone needs pass rushers. Drew Brees, you got to create pressure on the quarterback without compromising the back end. You lose a key to lead, you're going, you're going to get rid of him because he had off the field issues. Now, what do you have to do? You got to find another way to make your defense better. That's by going after the quarterback when you can't cover the receivers. Number 28 against the run. 
number 30 getting to the quarterback. Got to fix that. I, how, do you, how do you win 10 games? Well, you got to fix that when you got Breeze and Ryan in here. <laughs> you got to give Raheem and Mark Dominic a ton of credit the way they drafted. And not only did they draft well last year, what they did was poach other teams' practice squads successfully. With the 20th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Adrian Claiborne, defensive end, Iowa. Well, Mike, I'm hearing that the Chiefs are trying to trade down. They feel like there's still value. Guys like Cam Jordan on the board, people we didn't expect to be on the board, right. Mike. What do you think are the trade possibilities? Well, I think Cleveland's trying to trade up. I know New Orleans is trying to trade up. So I think obviously with Cam Jordan slipping this much, he becomes an attractive candidate here in the draft. And then Seattle's another team, but they're looking to get out of the first round. So, so the Chiefs and the Browns have swap picks. Again, the Browns were the team to trade down first in this draft when the Falcons popped up all the way from 27 to the sixth hole. And... Um, and that was to get Julio Jones. What do you think this is for? Well, let's preface this with, of course, Cleveland now has a lot of ammunition if they want to be a player. So Cam Jordan, I believe, makes a ton of sense here. They're revamping. They're going to a 4-3 front. He's a multiple guy. He can play outside. He can play inside. And he has tremendous value. It smells an awful lot like Cam Jordan. Well, actually, we're... No, Phil Taylor? We're looking in the green room, and that looks like a... A very happy Phil Taylor and what they did was take their own original third and send it to the Chiefs so they still have their two twos this is a guy that can play that one coach he'll probably play the one and, and, and Dick's gonna be a 4-3 guy yep he's a brilliant defensive coordinator but they just lost Sean Rogers they let him go exactly so they need a big man and this is this guy's big, big and strong and strong active in, inside he'll anchor that defense it looks like they're gonna try to build that defense from inside out. And Mike likes to do this. Mike Holmgren, trade back, move up, yep. and get, to get the guy they want. Please welcome Browns running back Peyton Hillis. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank my Lord Jesus Christ for giving me this opportunity today. And, uh, and I want to thank all my uh, fans out there that voted me on for the 2012 Madden cover. I really appreciate everything. And uh, with that, with the 21st pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Phil Taylor, defensive tackle Baylor. Here he comes. <laughs> Looks like a sheriff to me. Well, that's a big dude, there, Mike. Yeah, he's going to use up two blockers, I promise you. <laughs> With the 22nd pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Anthony Costanzo, offensive tackle, Boston College. Mike, your thoughts? I think he's a perfect fit. Let's face it, second round pick several years ago, Tony Hugo did not pan out. Charles Johnson has not panned out. This is a guy they can plug and play day one. He's intelligent. Marshall talked about how important that will be, especially at the line of scrimmage with Peyton Manning. With the 23rd pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Danny Watkins, guard Baylor. So after that heartwarming moment, Danny Watkins is a Philadelphia Eagle announced in New York City and gets a, the far, firefighter. Different, a far different reaction. What do you think about uh, the New Orleans Saints at 24, Mark? Well, it, it was said before we saw Cameron Jordan in the back that they would probably go Mark Ingram here. But it looks as so, regardless of how good your defensive coordinator is, it doesn't matter if your defensive coordinator shut down Peyton Manning in the second half in the Super Bowl. You still have to have players to get after the quarterback when you can't compromise the back end of coverage. And we saw that against Seattle. They could not get sacks when they needed to get sacks against Matt Hasselback and the Seattle Seahawks. So this pick makes sense yep. for what we saw from the, from the Saints late With in the, the season. With the 24th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Cameron Jordan, defensive end, California. 
So as Cam Jordan comes out here uh, as a Cal Bear. This is another value pick right here. Number 11 on my board goes 24th. I really thought a 3-4 team would have jumped on him a long time ago. Son of Steve Jordan, six-time Pro Bowler for the Minnesota Vikings. I did. Tremendous pressure. Tough kid. Great against the run. The one thing I will say, he doesn't have, in my opinion, elite edge speed. I think he's more of a base end. But the thing here in New Orleans is, who's going to play opposite Will Smith? That's what the question was, and that's what Marshall was saying. So I think when you pair him with a Will Smith, you've got a bookend that can play both the run and the pass. Now that uh, the Saints have made their pick, let's go in the Lexus War Room up in the Pacific Northwest. So much went down in the Seattle draft room last year. I mean, they were active in Pete Carroll's first draft as a head coach for the Seattle Seahawks. They're at 25. And a lot of people think maybe they go quarterback here. What do you think the Seattle Seahawks do right here at 25? Interesting pick here. They could go right tackle with Gabe Karimi. They could go defensive tackle because, remember, Brandon Meebane may not be back next year. Very talented free technique. Marvin Austin is on the board. And Jimmy Smith starts to work his way into the picture. Philadelphia didn't take him. Pete Carroll would not be adverse to a character kid. And after this pick, Baltimore is on the board, who also has to be looking at Jimmy Smith. So some real intrigue right now with Jimmy Smith, where he comes. And a couple picks down the road, Rich, I think we're going to start seeing maybe Andy Dalton coming into play with a trade up. Well, Mark Ingram has some extra company back there in the draft room. All the Alabama guys, Darius, who went third overall, and Julio Jones, who went sixth overall, and Nick Saban also sitting out there with their teammate, uh, Mark Ingram. Heisman Trophy. Heisman Trophy winner, national champion. He is still sitting out there. Who's going to take him? I mean, well, you got the Chiefs, the Chiefs are the Chiefs are already set at running back. I'm just taking a look down. You got Seahawks, Ravens, Chiefs, Patriots, Patriots, and Green Bay. Yeah, Patriots and Green Bay are both logical landing points for him if Green Bay doesn't trade that pick away. With the 25th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select James Carpenter, tackle, Alabama. How about that? So Nick, well, you just saw Nick Saban go. James Carpenter, huh? he got selected and he went before hey, the Bama Mark guy. Ingram. <laughs> wow, Nick, Nick was surprised. He was surprised. So there you go. James Carpenter is uh, is a Seattle Seahawk. What do you think, Mike? I had him graded as a early to mid second round pick. I thought he had a great senior bowl week. He's a finesse left tackle. They've already got Russell Okun. So I really believe they're going to kick him to the right side and give him every opportunity to plug and play. Mark Ingram here in New York City. He would like to be liberated from the green room right now as he's still sitting in there, um, 25 picks in. Why? Mike Mack, why? I don't think it's a big surprise. Every single one of our production meetings for the last several weeks, all we want are the buzzwords. Who's rising, who's falling? The guys we've talked about as potential fallers are Daquan Bowers. Why? Number one, foremost, medical. Daquan Bowers has a knee that could be degenerative over time. It's a risk-reward scenario. And if your doctor says no, you're out of the game. If your doctor says maybe, you might not be in the game till the second round. So we kind of knew this might happen. The second guy, I said yesterday that Mark Ingram is a great football player. Great. And he may slide, not because of his ability to play the game of football, but because the position that Marshall played so well for so many years has been devalued. It's a pass first league, and I'll tell you one more thing. It's the best depth of a running back class I've seen in years. So even if you say, oh, I didn't get Mark Ingram, you can come back in the third or fourth round and get a good football player.
Pittsburgh Steelers are throwing the heck out of the football these days. They're not three yards in a cloud of dust anymore. Yep, yep. So the Baltimore Ravens are going to have to cover. You're going to have to have some defensive backs. Ozzie knows that. And it, even though the scores are 17 to 16 most of the time, you got to have some defensive backs. Let me tell you what else Ozzie knows. You put a guy like Jimmy Smith in that locker room. We talk about guys that have had issues with characters. What do you do? You put them in a strong locker room. There is no stronger locker room in the National Football League than the one Ray Lewis and Ed Reed leads for the Baltimore Ravens. Something is cooking. We have a trade. We have a trade. Baltimore is famous we... for trading out. Well, they're living up to their fame. Cause... And if they're not comfortable at 26 with a player, they'll, they'll get out in a heartbeat. Ozzie Newsom's done it forever. His partner in crime, Eric DaCosta, they're phenomenal at this. We've got a trade. The question is who and for whom? Mm. Could it be Andy Dalton? Could somebody be getting the quarterback they want? Could it be Mallet? Could it be somebody getting the quarterback they want? Could it be somebody getting the running back from Alabama yeah. that they want? Could it be in either front one of the of Patriots? Those? Could it be something completely different, as they would say on Monty Python? What could it possibly be? As everybody here is counting down, but they don't know there's been a trade. <laughs> but I like hearing people count. Sort of like Schoolhouse Rock. Kansas City. Kansas is City's now on the clock. So that that's Ooh, just because uh, the Chiefs were picking next. It's not because the Chiefs right. were the ones who made this trade. So we are sort of in a state of limbo. I think somebody is waiting to see if there's a stay on the 26th pick right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like to play with that, Rich. <laughs> that was good. We're sort of in we're sort of in limbo, and Baltimore may have passed. I don't know. We're trying to find this out. The Chiefs are on the clock at 27, and the Ravens were on the clock at 26. As we're trying to sort this out. And I guess we can't even start playing around with the concept of who do the Chiefs want if we don't know who the Ravens or whoever traded up to the Ravens to take. All I know is that uh, it looks like Joel Busser of the NFL is on the phone in the orchestra pit. And, and what uh, does that mean? That means there's been a trade. There you go. I think what what happens here is when you make a trade, you call Joel Bustard, the other team calls Joel Bustard, so you get him on the phone. It stops the clock. You cannot get passed over. That basically, he allows the trade to go through. He reads the language. It holds the other team from jumping you and going through. So typically, when you get down to the wire, you call Bustard, the other team calls Bustard, stops the clock. They can't jump you. Now, if you don't call Bustard, any team can jump you. They can jump right over you like the Minnesota Vikings did when they slid way back and they took Brian McKinney as they let other teams jump over huh. so uh, again we don't know if specifically uh, what's going on but we're, we're waiting to hear and there's lots of people who are on the phone and gesturing and Kansas City is selected New England's on the clock so something's going on here as uh, we're trying to find this out I like this though there you uh, go Baltimore's made a selection so, I wonder if they got it in before Kansas City. I don't know. Whose pick is number what? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Listen. Who's 26 I'm and who's it. 27? I'm you trying to it. slot these guys already? Hey, I like trust me, our agents are worried about this. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Clearly, what happened, Kansas City didn't make... Kansas City didn't make a pick ahead of Baltimore. Baltimore didn't turn their card in. Kansas City picked a different player. I get Joel just put a phone down and picked up another one. <laughs> He's almost like this right now down there. If we can get a shot at him, that would be fantastic. He's down there uh, on the phone gesturing right now. There he is. Wow. Joel wants to know what's going on. That's a big chair. It kind of swallows him up, doesn't wow. it? He wants to know what's happening because the draft is stopped. Hey, we need to get him on the house phone. There's something happening now. There's Ray Anderson. He's he's a sheriff there, too. Whoa. Got here. Sort it, Roger. Uh, Kansas City first. I love it. Passes. I'm loving this. I think it's Kansas City. With the 26th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Jonathan Baldwin, wide receiver, Pittsburgh. So Jonathan Baldwin is now joining Dwayne Bow and that high-powered offense that have tons of playmakers with Jamal Charles. And I think he did say that was the 26th pick in the draft for the Chiefs, and they picked 27th. We're going to straighten this thing out. Thankfully, we've got a commercial break. And everyone's on the phone now, Nerd. How many people can be on the phone at once? A trade has just been announced, but it's, it's, it's that the New Orleans Saints have now traded with the Patriots. Get back in. But we will now, I guess, hear the Ravens pick. With the 27th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, 
the Baltimore Ravens select Jimmy Smith, defensive back, Colorado. And so Jimmy Smith goes to the Ravens, but with the 27th pick, it does appear that the Ravens passed and the Chiefs got in with Jonathan Baldwin. But Jimmy Smith is a guy, I guess, that they wanted anyway, so no harm, no foul. He's now a member of the Baltimore Ravens. And I like what Michael, the playmaker, Irvin, said about Jimmy Smith. Top 15 ability. He has significant off-field issues, but Michael, to me, this is a win-win. Yeah. The Baltimore Ravens get a top 10 talent on the edge. He gets a locker room Jimmy he Smith needs. gets Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. Right. He gets a locker room he needs. And it's a win-win for me. I think that's just a great, well, great The Saints fit. have now just tripped. Once again, the New England Patriots have traded out of a first round of an NFL draft. What new, right? That's basically what happens here. There you go. So New Orleans has now popped into the first round to take Mark Ingram at this year. They're saying, with, they're saying with Mark Ingram, we're going they're going to be in the playoffs, going and that pick is going to be probably right about where this pick is right now. And they're getting the kind of back that they need. I believe Ingram was in your top 15. Like 17, yeah. Okay, so your top 20. Yeah. New Orleans just got two of your top 20 guys two. on the playoff a playoff caliber team that just two years ago was in the Super Bowl. <laughs> and keep in mind, Reggie Bush, the uncertainty of whether they're going to pay him. Pierre Thomas has been hurt. There are durability issues. And all of a sudden, you plug this young man in with Drew Brees and Jimmy Graham and Marquise Colston, and they're telling me we're going to break, oh. so I can't keep going and going <laughs> and going. But Rich, take me to break. With the 28th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Mark Ingram, running back Alabama. Well, the chip got bigger again. It's 28th overall is the longest a running back has ever waited to be drafted in the common era. Marvin Austin is still on the board. Tommy, Tommy Harris has been released, so it's an offensive or defensive line, and I think Chicago has more options than they thought heading into the draft. With the 29th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Gabe Karimi, offensive oh, tackle, it. Wisconsin. Makes total sense. Gabe Karimi, he's a technician. He's not a great athlete. But I think what the Bears will do is take Jamarcus Webb from the right side, kick him to the left, and let Karimi play right tackle. Akeem Ayers has not been picked. Justin Houston has not been picked. They could have used an edge rusher. They went with the five technique. Their starting five techniques are both free agents. The New York Jets select Mohamed Wilkerson. Defensive tackle, Temple. So there you go. Mohamed Wilkerson is going to be wearing green. This guy can get to the quarterback. Yep. Now, if you go down, if you put your four down, he can, he can line up outside yep. or inside. Stop the run and rush the passer in the nickel package. I like what he brings to the table. And that's rare for a 315-pound guy to go on the outside in a 4-2 nickel scheme. He's terrific inside, but he can go out there, and he'll be a force if he's playing defensive end in nickel. The Pittsburgh Steelers are now on the clock. You see Cameron Hayward with a Steelers hat on, so I think this, the mystery has been uh, has been removed here. What a great pick. <laughs> Played at Ohio State. Oh, dear. You want to talk about a tough guy. Son of Ironhead. I thought he had one of the best game tapes I saw all season in the Sugar Bowl against Arkansas. He had two sacks, two pass broken up. He was in the backfield all day. He's one of the toughest football players in the country. And what a surprise, Kevin Colbert always pulls one out at the end of the first round. With the 31st pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Cameron Hayward, defensive end, Ohio State. <laughs> Very emotional moment for the Buckeye. He is going to be coached up by Dick LeBeau. That ain't too shabby. He's also the eighth defensive end to be chosen in tonight's first round. None of them named Daquan Bowers. What do you think the Green Bay Packers are going to do to wrap things up tonight, Mike? I've been saying for two days it's a natural trade down. All the five techniques are gone. They just got wiped off in the last two picks. 
I think they'd love to get out of here if they could compile some additional picks if they can. If they're stuck here at 32, Brooks Reed, outside linebacker, Akeem Ayers, outside linebacker, and potentially an offensive lineman, maybe a Derek Sherrod. What about uh, another running back? What about that? What about LaShore or somebody like that here? I don't see that. I don't see LaShore, and I'm not as big a LaShore guy as many people are in this draft. Um, I don't see a running back at all here. I just see that. I mean, we're talking about need. I know Ryan Grant's going to come back healthy. Um, and I know that if, young, the, young, uh, the young kid did very well at the end of the year last if, year. If there him. was one thing you remember about the Green Bay Packers, their offensive line, when they lost a guy, they were shuffling, and they were yep. shuffling mm -hmm. hard. Late in the season, they were lucky to get their guys back yep. and keep Aaron Rodgers healthy. And that offensive line played good down the stretch, but going he never had here. too many offensive tackles. The pace has been great, too. The pace has been phenomenal. All right, here's the Green Bay Packers to wrap up the night with their final pick of the Thursday night. With the 32nd pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Super Bowl champion Green Bay Packers select Derek Sherrard, offensive tackle, Mississippi State. So they went for protection for Aaron Rodgers, Mike. And to me, it's a really natural pick again. Chad Clifton's getting old. You can keep Bulaga on the right side. Sherrod is a left tackle. He's a finesse left tackle, a better pass protector. I think he needs to play with a little better leverage, but at the end of the day, that's a great pick for the Green Bay Packers. And at the end of the day, Ryan Mallett, Andy Dalton, and Daquan Bowers are all still on the board. Who's going to go ahead and take them on Friday? As